He says, Dad, are you putting on some more fur? Are we getting ready to go outside? Hey everybody, this is Brett, and today I would like to read to you some of the good news stories. Hopefully it will brighten your day as it's already doing mine. Now, I haven't even looked at these other than this first one, and it just got me inspired because I love animals, you know, so check it out. <clears throat> Volunteers are making mittens for injured koalas. There's the picture. I can't even tell what that is really very well, but... The International Fund for Animal Welfare announced Wednesday that it is taking action to help koalas injured by the catastrophic bushfires in South Australia and Victoria. Many of the slow-moving animals have suffered burns on their paws while trying to escape burning fires. Once rescued, koalas are very docile and will sit quietly while they are treated. However, local vets and wildlife rehabilitators need volunteers to make cotton mittens that will help keep the burn cream and bandages in place for the injured joys. It can take up to a year for the koala's burned paws to heal, so there's a demand for hundreds of pairs for each of the surviving animals. In just one day, the IFAW website <clears throat> collected pledges to make 500 pairs of mittens. Some people are making up to 100, pair, 100 mittens. <coughs> Excuse me. Joey Shared of the IFAW told Today.com. It's fantastic. We didn't expect this response. We've been inundated and it's brilliant. Volunteers are using a diagram with a specific pattern to make mittens from clean 100% cotton, such as old sheets, tea towels, or cotton t-shirts. The simple-to-make mittens are being sent to IFAW at 6 Belmore Street, Surrey Hills, 2010, for distribution throughout. Isn't that cool? Cool. It's sad that the, the fires got them like that, but man, it's sometimes humans are, are wonderful and do great things. So, let's see. Best Golden Globe Moment. Leaping Cumber Patch Photo Bombs. I don't think I want to read that one. Flower Girl and Ring Bearer from Wedding Get Married 20 Years Later. I don't want to read that one either. <laughs> Dollar Slice Pizza Shop. No, I don't want to read that one. After letter, Peyton Manning searches three months for military family. Okay, let's check it out. After inspiring letter, Peyton Manning has team searching for three months for military family. When Kristen Patterson sent quarterback Peyton Manning an inspiring letter about her husband, she never expected a response from the NFL superstar and so didn't include any contact information. Yet, after reading about Army Sergeant Ryan Patterson, who during two tours of Afghanistan would set alarms at odd hours of the night just to hear the Broncos football games, <laughs> Manning requested the team's public relations team to try to find her. The only problem was the couple and their 10-month-old daughter had recently moved 3,950 miles away to Fort Wainwright in North Pole, Alaska. It took three months, but the Broncos tracked down Patterson's phone number through the Alaska Utility Company and sent word to Kristen through a sheriff to arrange a surprise meeting in the couple's hometown of Cincinnati where they were, were, would be staying for the holidays. <laughs> okay, let's uh, watch another one here. Let's see. 129 families build huge blanket fort and then give them to the homeless. <laughs> okay. A little boy dreamed up an idea for his seventh birthday party, a charitable activity which has now captured the imagination of the entire city of Greensboro, North Carolina. Right here in North Carolina. Austin Spitz wanted to help folks who were homeless, and he loved building blanket forts. His mom, Gwen, 
got permission to use a large space at Glenwood Coffee and Books while August asked his friends to bring blankets to help him build a giant fort. After the party was over, the top 64 blankets were washed and donated to a local nonprofit that helps the homeless. But the idea didn't stop there. Gwen, who is the director of community engagement at the very nonprofit, decided to make, take the idea to the next level because so many families call the emergency shelter asking, for their children, asking how their children can get involved with helping the needy. She organized an event on Sunday called the World's Largest in Greensboro Blanket Fort. The kids had so much fun, Kathleen Edwards, Directory of Programs of it, 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 told the Good, Net Good News Network, we operated an emergency shelter and warming center where the temperature temperatures drop, whenever the temperatures drop. And this month we can really use the added blankets. <laughs> Augie Spitz, now, jo now eight, joined with children from 127 other families for the massive fort building fund, during which 259 blankets were collected. <laughs> okay. The adults strung colorful ropes around the room, and the kids used tables and chairs and, and clothespins to make the tunnels and rooms. Tomorrow morning, in the same room, the fort was built in roughly fort built in. Roughly 220 men and women, and some even children, will come to use IRC services, said Gwen. It will be a gr with great pride that we can tell them that the community came together in this phenomenal way to help. Okay. Surfer's ring lost in Pacific Ocean returned after 35 years. Okay. So, Robert Fowler said he was certain that he would never see his ring again when it slipped off his finger in 1979 and was lost in the Pacific Ocean. He had owned, he had owned it for only a couple of months, but 35 years later, it would be returned to him by a good Samaritan treasure hunter roaming the beach where he had lost it. The San Francisco Chronicle reported thir yesterday, the code of honor among treasure hunters requires a good faith effort to find the owner of anything traceable. That's why Larry Furzig had found, has found and reunited his with owners no fewer than three gold rings. Not a lot of videos in this uh, this week's Good News Network email. That's all right. Tribals see lights in their homes for the first time. There we go. Check that out. Tribals see lights in their homes for the first time. Tribal communities in some of the most remote and inaccessible forests in India were lifted out of darkness and given hope for a better future. After never having electricity in their homes, they can now turn on solar lights and charge cell phones, an advancement that has kicked off development for the entire village. In July 2014, a micro-lending platform called MyApp partnered with the Melinda, Melinda Foundation to install affordable community-owned solar mini-grids at rural villages that wanted to trade in their dirty kerosene lamps for roughly the same cost as they were paying for to buy fuel. Communities like the Santhals in the Oyadohoya <laughs> hills, <laughs> which had for centuries lived on substance farming in West Bengal, India, were given loans to install affordable solar electricity. Milap's community of micro lenders provided finance so the tribe's people could own their own solar grids and play a key role in their own development. Solar lights not only are a means to improve, improving their livelihood and education, lifting them above the darkness also symbolizes hope, a path to a better future. In a few short months since partnering with Melinda, lenders on Millap have helped up 
set up solar microgrids in 23 off-grid tribal locations in the Sunbeam Bands and in 20 hamlets of Purulia, Oyahuya Hills, benefiting over 20, 280 families. Here's a video. एक एक विलेज में इतना ज्यादा इंटीरियर में है कि उनको अगर हॉस्पिटल का हॉस्पिटल में आना हो या कहीं पे बाजार जाना हो तो उनको दो घंटा तीन घंटा पैदल चल के या साइकिल नहीं करके उनको जाना पड़ता है Panhandler holds sign thanking community after securing a job. Woo! <laughs> that one says it all. That one says it all. We don't even need to read anything. That one is good to go. So thanks everybody for joining me. I am getting there. There's absolutely zero doubt that I am getting there. Recently I've made some radical, some cool, some totally open and able changes to my diet. <laughs> that means that I was totally ready and we are really moving forward now. So thanks for joining me. Will you still love me tomorrow? Dad, are you making fun of me?